Good everyone. My name is Carol Ashburn. I'm the Director of Marketing for Excellus, and I'd like to welcome you to Webinar Wednesday. Today we'll be going through the new features we've added to our version 6 edition of your Dispatch Series software and taking a closer look. And here to present that to you is Kevin Pasternak, our National Sales Manager. Um, I'd like to welcome you as well to our web today. I'm going to leave the line open so that if anybody does have any questions as we go through, you can certainly ask them. There will be a Q&A session at the end if, you, if you'd like to wait till then. I, if there's any background noise in your office, um, if you have a mute button on your phone, if you put that on, uh, put us on hold during the webinar. We've had some people do that in the past, and we all get to listen to some nice on hold music. If that happens, I'll probably have to go ahead and mute you all. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to go through a little bit of a corporate view uh, for those of you that are new customers or those who have been customers for a while and have, have just been familiar with, with Prophecy in our, in our uh, company. As a company, has been in business for 20 years. Uh, our corporate offices, where I'm located today, and all of our development, uh, most of our development is done, all of our support is done, is right here in, in Bloomfield, Connecticut. Uh, we have 15,000 active customers uh, made up of, for hire carriers, private fleets, uh, PPLs, manufacturers, distributors, use all of our applications from our Log routing software, driver driver tracks, driver management software, fuel tax software, mileage and routing software, and we've got 1,200 customers that are using our complete dispatch software, um, like everybody that's on the line today. So Prophecy was actually acquired by Excellus Corporation, so we're now a wholly owned subsidiary of Excellus. Um, Excellus is a, a, a supply management software company. Uh, acquired out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. We have divisions in, in, in uh, Toronto, the greater Toronto area, uh, Plymouth, Michigan, here in Bloomfield, as we uh, have already talked about. Excel has about 2,500 enterprise customers um, running uh, various uh, applications. Um, one of the companies that they acquired before was FreightLogix. FreightLogix is another TMS software, uh, but it specializes in the LTL market. Beacon was another one. Radio Beacon is a, is a warehouse management software product. Mass Solutions out of Plymouth, Michigan is a product that is a data collection product that is seamlessly integrated to the Microsoft Dynamics accounting solution. In fact, it's the only one that goes directly to the Dynamics back end. Delphor was another acquisition of Excellus. All of these, have, by the way, have happened in the last three and a half years. Delphor is a 3PL system. Uh, 3PL being defined as a warehouse management system that's used in a 3PL operation, i.e. A, a public operation. Together, um, we've got customers in 17 countries across across the globe. We've got about 160 plus employees. We are growing both uh, organically, and we will continue to grow through uh, through acquisition. Um, there may be their acquisition before the end of uh, of this calendar year. We're staying um, but we're small enough to be personal to take care of you. And I, hopefully, the last year, none of you have noticed any way in which did with us here at Prophecy solid financial backing with with an excess of thirty million dollars um, today. Of, of commitment, uh, employees' integrity, humility, um, and citizenship. Those are all things that that the founder. Excellus, the four individuals that founded Excellus strongly believe in um, and remind all of us every day. Um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the reason we're all here today, and that's to take a look at version 6. Now, I know many of you online today have received version 6, and, and some of you uh, may not have received version 6. And certainly, um, uh, at the end, uh, we can, uh, if you see version 6, we can go through that. You can shoot us an email. We can get it out to you. But as with any other uh, major update that we do, we do not just release it to, to all 1,200 customers at once. Um, we, we send it out in small batches. So the first thing I'd like to do today, in order to recognize the differences that are in version 6, I think it's important at least to go through software quickly and take a look at uh, what's there now. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to go through, and I'm actually just going to going to book a regular load um, so that we can all familiarize ourselves 
stuff with 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 just what's what's happening now. So I'm just going to book a load um, that's from Chicago um, coming here to Bloomfield. Uh, give it a start date of uh, the 16th. We'll give it a delivery date of the 17th. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Um, we'll, uh, we'll put it goods on here. We'll just make it um, staking. Forty thousand pounds. And if anybody, once again, if anybody has any questions on what I'm doing throughout the presentation today, please go ahead and ask. All of this should be very familiar with you, and then we can put some reference numbers in here if we want to as well. So just booked a load, load 6831. I'm just going to go ahead and assign that load. And you should be familiar with, I believe, this this assignment screen. Um, you know, any yellow on here is showing us warnings. Um, and red that we see on here is showing us things that are past due. Um, and so we're going to take uh, driver Andrews, trailer, and assign it to that to that load as well. So we've got a tractor trailer on there. Going to hit the payments to calculate some pay for the driver. I'm going to change status to mark it on route and change the status once again to go ahead and and complete load. And everything that, that we've done here so far looks very much um, like you're doing things in your system today. Conference now. So keeping in mind what we just went through and what we saw, let's go through and look at just a simple setup things for version 6 that, that you should be aware of. Um, first thing, trailer washout functionality. We have we have customers that do dry freight. We have customers that do flat freight. We have customers that do liquid bulk, um, all kinds of things. But certainly the people that are doing bulk, whether it be liquid or dry, have asked us about trailer washout functionality throughout the years. That's something that has been added um, in version 6, both for setting up goods and commodities and then tracking when they're done, if they're required, et cetera. So the first thing you'd want to do is go to maintain goods. Select the good, and let's just select uh, today. Let's just select latex, and you'll notice here in there's a there's a, a new field here that says trailer washout required after hauling, and it's checked off. Means that if if X is added to a load, and we will add that to a load in a few minutes, the prompt us when we complete the load for washout information. If that washout isn't done before that lo that loaded that trailer is assigned to a next load, it's going to alert somebody to wash out what was required. So that's just some basic setup that can washouts. And we'll we'll talk more and see more about washouts when we go through and actually put a load through the system. Any questions on this right now? I think that's really straightforward. Another major area that, that was uh, added in version 6 is tracking expenses within dispatch. Over the years, we've had a number of requests from customers that they, that wanted to track expenses. They wanted to look at a piece of equipment, a tractor, for instance, and wanted to look at it for a specific time frame. They wanted to see what's all the revenue in that time frame, what expenses in that time frame, how much fuel, how much have I spent on maintenance, uh, what about my uh, my other expenses, tolls, what about things like tractor payments, registration, all those types of things. And we we took a really a really a long time before we added anything in dispatch for this, because our position had always been that those were accounting functions. And those of you that are my customers know that when I have software with you and we've talked over time in QuickBooks, one of the things I strongly recommend that you do is set up class tracking in QuickBooks and set up um, departments that you're collecting by power unit so that you can track those expenses and get your P&L over in QuickBooks. But again, people were asking for this functionality within dispatch, so this is what we did. We added, you're now going to find something that says expense types. And see in my system that I do have a number of expense types set up already. I've got a highway use tax set up. I've got tractor insurance. I've got tractor loan payment, tractor registration, trailer insurance, trailer registration. You notice for each of these expense types that I've set up, I've got a frequency set up as well. I can one time, a weekly, beginning month. Minimum month, end of the month. So that's when should this expense be applied, whether it's quarterly, end of the quarter, annually, annually. You can activate or deactivate an expense type at any time, and you can you can put a count for that type. 
add an expense type. So we'll just click add. add to, uh, we'll just call it um, tolls. Time expense type. I'll save it and I'll put a dollar amount in here because this would be an expense type that I would add on the fly if I if, if I was doing invoicing and I saw there was there was an expense that was incurred, or if I was doing my settlements and I saw there was an expense that was occurred for tolls, I could just add this expense and then it would be tracked throughout the system. And questions on adding expense types. Let's go out there and let's go to manage expense transactions. So we're going to operations. We're going to go to manage expense transactions. And what this screen is designed for is when you're setting up expenses and you want to associate a one expense with multiple pieces of equipment, instead of to go into each tracker and add a specific expense, like your highway use tax, for example. In here, what you can do is you can select the expense. We'll say high use tax in this case. Um, we can see when it when it should begin. So let's say let's say it's going to be in um, next year on January 1st, and it's going to run through 12 31 to 2010. Oops. We've got tractors down here. We'll select all, and then we'll click create. So now see that that all of those those tractors have been selected. If I scroll this down, and this expense would be applied to all of those. As I said, select all, and then I clicked on create. Now I've done this already in my system, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do this. But that gives you how to do it. Any questions on this screen? Close that out. What here? Let's go to maintain. Let's go to tractors. Let's go to UCT. And you're notice a new box at the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and just expand it for you here. You can see for tractor O2CT, I've got some expenses that are associated with that tractor. I've got a use tax of 550 that was, I said, apply that as of the first. Of, of 1109 tracker insurance for the year at seven thousand dollars and of course if you wanted to break that insurance up between your liability and your cargo um, you, you could break um, what what your tractor pants are uh, tractor registration costs for that tractor on an annual basis what I'm not seeing here and what I don't have in the system right now is any one-time expenses I may have put in Holes, um, anything else that, that I that I wanted to add in as an expense. Let's look at, at a trailer. Fifty three oh two. And we can see some expenses that have been set up and associated with this trailer. Once expenses will get applied automatically throughout the year and we were reporting and take a look, look at that. Um, in just a little while. So set up, and, and that's what we've added as far as expense tracking is concerned. Are there questions in the area of, of expense tracking? Hello, this is Agamemnon, Gemini Transport. Yes. Uh, can I just a quick question? Uh, what is this washout above uh, above expenses? The washout is is, and we're going to talk a little bit about, about that, a little bit more about that later. But one is for people that are that are. Doing Doing liquid bulk, and let's say you're hauling milk, for example, and every time you finish hauling a load of milk, you've got to do a washout of the uh, of the of the uh, of the trailer. Oh. So that, is, is that will track a history of your washouts. Okay. Okay. It's okay? a good okay. question. Uh, now is the alert center, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with with standard alerts that have been in the system almost from day one. Alerts pop. Up in, in in operations for CL expirations and medicals and uh, and recent conflicts, just you know those type of alerts. We've had these years more um, more and, and for alerts to show up on other people's desktops. So what we added was alert 
Center. So let's go to Operations. We'll go to Port Center. And when you get version 6, for those of you that have it installed already, you might be saying, hey, I'm not seeing an Alert Center, Kevin. Well, because you need to start the Alert Center up the first time. So if you follow this, and, and this session is being recorded, so if you want to, and we'll email the recording to all of you afterwards so you, you can um, do this. Yourself. But go to Operations, click on Alert Center, and you'll notice now in the upper right-hand corner, it's got zero, no, zero new alerts and click Open. I'm going to click there, and now I've opened <coughs> my Alert Center. A couple of things that you should keep in mind with the Alert Center. One, the things are for a specific user. So the things for user Kevin. These are the alerts that are going to show up on my desktop, the ones that set up are set up. So as an operations manager, for example, I might set up some alerts. And then somebody else, when somebody else did something, for instance, um, I'm going to set up my deadhead percent alert. Trigger value is deadhead percent on any load at ten percent of the load miles. I want to know about it, and I system them to look for those type that type of event thirty seconds, so every half minute. You could a minimum revenue uh, revenue per loaded mile alert, i.e., create a business rule in your system so if anybody books a load and the minimum revenue per loaded mile is less than X. In this case, we'll say is a dollar twenty-five. The system can go out and it can alert me right on my desktop, and I can say, you know, check those every every three minutes. I can deliver appointment reminders, and uh, driver appointment reminders are tied to the driver's schedule. Hopefully, the driver's schedule to schedule things like driver time off or vacation time, things like that. When we introduced the driver schedule back in version 5, version 5, one that we got from people was, you know, we can set up the alerts, but I'd like to, I'd like a pop-up to come up to tell me, hey, in two days, this driver's got a vacation starting. So what we did was these driver alert appointment reminders. And I went to the driver schedule, and we finished going through the alert center to show you how you can set up um, in the driver schedule so that, that this appointment reminder will work. So if I want point reminders, I can set those up, and I'll just say every five minutes. We use the idea of groups in version 6. I'm going to talk a little bit about groups a little bit later on in the presentation today, but an example of using groups in the, in the alert center would be, let's say you have multiple dispatchers, and I, you have a dispatcher that is responsible for for the for for a, a specific group of drivers. You could create a group of drivers and then click select down here, select that group associated here. So I'm not going to see driver appointment reminders for every driver in the system. I'm only going to see appointment reminders for the drivers that I'm responsible for. I also have some, some expirations that, that, of course, you're familiar with already. Uh, but once again, um, these will be more proactive and popping up on your screen. Many days and how often the system should look for these. Tractor registration. Do you want to? When do you want to know before that? And of course, trailer registration. And every five, <coughs> those are going to apply. I'm going to start the center when dispatch opens. I'm going to apply alerts. So all of these alerts are active to close the alert center. Any questions the alert center with what we just went over? Questions at the end, that's fine. Uh, uh, this is Harvey Gemini again. Yes. Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, is, is it possible to add another type of alert, such as annual inspection for the equipment? Uh, it's a question, and, and what I would suggest you do with that is is you can send those in to us. We are looking and collecting suggestions for for new alerts to add to the system. Okay. So at this time, um, you know, it isn't in the system, but please, um, you know, and I'll certainly jot it down. Uh, but please send send something like that in. There is another way that I would suggest that you can track that today. If if anybody's not doing it, I would set up an annual inspection as a maintenance item. Um, we're just under uh, maintain equipment maintenance. Um, I set up a main code 
for on a tractor for an annual annual inspection. I'd put I'd enter when the last annual inspection was completed. I'd schedule the next one for 12 months. I'd set my preferences so I get alerted of that 30 days in advance, and then right back board we go and look and see what's coming due, past due, etc. You will see that. So for that today, but certainly add to the alert center would be a good idea as well. Okay. Okay. okay? All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, driver schedule. Um, if, if you come to the driver's schedule and, and you're adding an event, whether it's a personal time, a vacation time, you need a reminder that's been added. And select, you know, when, when the alert would go off, whether it's whether it's three days, two days, one day, 12 hours, eight hours before. Um, so that's what triggers that, that alert back in the alert center. <coughs> What we do now is go through a number of preferences with you, and I know that preferences aren't the most exciting thing in the world, but that's in version six, you're going to have to come into your preferences and, and go through some of these. So let's let's go through them. First off, on the company info tab, there's a new section here that's that's selected that says type. We have motor carrier and brokerage. We have a number of customers that are using our system today that are 100% non-asset-based customers. I'm, I'm not sure if any of you are, are on the line. But it are a 100% brokerage operation. What I, what I suggest you do, and, and we'll have some ways to go about, we'll talk about this a little bit later, you can accomplish this, but you can come in and you, you can set up the system to be set in what we call the brokerage mode. If you set up in the brokerage mode, on the dispatch board, where things might say driver today, terminology will be changed to motor carrier. The manual would be gone. Tractor files, trailer files would be turned off, would not would not be apparent. On the dispatch board, things like tractors, trailers, drivers, the vent and maintenance I mentioned uh, with the question a few minutes ago, types of things would not show up on the dispatch board. In the assignments tab, we're currently drivers, company drivers, owner operators, etc. Those would be gone and you'd have carriers and brokers. In the fit functionality in the system. Everything leading to drivers has been removed from the system. What it does is it really cleans the system up and streamlines it for you if you are a hundred percent non asset based operation. So that's specifically put in for, for, for those types of customers. To the shipments tab, I mean, excuse me, let's go to the system defaults tab and let's take a look at source conflicts first. If you received version 5, if you didn't come in here and set this up, I would suggest you all go in and do that um, as soon as we finish today. One thing to find that is new, however, in version 6, and the only thing in this tab that's new in version 6 is the trailer washout functionality. And I can put it either prevent uh, alignment if a washout has not been completed, warn me, or ignore, and I'm just going to put it to warn and we'll put it there. In selection, so this this settings here in the display settings. Display was always there. You could always define how many days. However, now what you can also set up is how many days in the past do you want to see. When we came out with the new resource assignment screen, the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. For some of the comments we got was, you know, what I'd really like to see is I can see where, like from today on, you know, today being Wednesday on, but I want to see what guy did yesterday or the day before what that did. So if you put it to previous days to display, that will be a default, and it will come up and you'll see, in this case, two previous days. Cus also asked us that they wanted to see completed loads um, on the assignment screen. So I'll show completed loads on there, and I'll turn that on to see what was the last commodity that I hauled in a trailer. Um, to have that trailer been cleaned out? Does it have to be cleaned out? Is it going to be a problem with what I'm putting in there, what I'm going to haul? Um, so you can see the last commodity that was hauled. So I'm going to all of those turn and we'll click OK here. For the scheduler. Um, now, IDs, instead of just looking at driver ID, you can look um, previous days in there as well. Um, you can look at look at loads. So you, similar functionality 
to what we just talked about um, in the uh, resource selection. I just want to talk about, and this has to do more with uh, uh, with buying. You know, I've bought new machines in the last few years. When you're exporting to Excel, and, and I hope I hope all of you are taking advantage of the functionality where you can export every the dispatch board to Excel. You can export 99% of the reports in the program to Excel, uh, and then do whatever you want with that data out in Excel. But we are now support Excel 2007. So if you've had issues with Excel 2007 in the past, come into your file, you go into uh, your preferences, system defaults, print defaults, and if you're using Excel 207, select Excel 2007, and any issues you had um, should go away. Questions, any of the preferences that we just went through? Okay, let's save those. Before we actually book a new load so we can see a number of these items, in, I'm just going to come to the booking screen. I'm going to come over. I'm going to drag the walkout. Bring that over, over here. Got a few of these. Aware and, and clearly, I'm not using the default layout in our system, um, but I'm sure that you can you can drag these different fields around. You you save the field, whatever it is, and the next time you come in, um, that screen is going to look just just the way you left it, um, and that applies to all the users in the system. So let's go ahead and, and book a new load and, and take a look at some of that new functionality that we just set up. I click book new. I'm going to just type in my customer name, Albany. This code is going to pick up. Oops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to do that. I'm particularly going to pick up at Albany, and it's going to go to Dean Manufacturing in Chicago. Let's have it pick up now, and let's have it delivered tomorrow at five, and we'll save it. Gives us 6830. We can see this washout after automatically got checked off. Once again, why did we do that? Because we set that up in the in the reference that if latex is hauled, a washout is required. Let's say it's 42,000 pounds. It's a ways. Uh, we'll go it. Save it. If we want to put any reference numbers in there, we can do that. We can put in a reference. Where is it? And save it. I'm the fields that are now taking effect. You can see prior to display is set to two days now. I've never noticed in the past, but if you look at the days Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we can see certainly seven days there. That's the days to display. Display and our default is set to two. Wednesday. The day that the day that you're actually on, or I should say, the day that the load is supposed to be picked up is going to be is going to have a brown header. The day that the load is scheduled to be delivered is going to have this blue header. And now we're seeing two previous days. We're seeing Monday and Tuesday, and we can see that Andrew, because we're now showing composites also in the purple, we can see Andrew load 6831 with tractor O2CT trailer 5301. That's been added in version. Six also, we're showing the equipment on this on this on this floor. We can see the origin of that load was Dean Manufacturing in Chicago, and the destination was Cole Morgan in Blue Connecticut. We can see the actual pickup date and time, and the actual pickup date, uh, the actual delivery date and time. So, assign Andrews. We're going to do that the same way. So we'll we'll simply double click, and we've we've assigned Andrews a load. We'll come to the trailer file. And we can see there's some new information that we're seeing here as well. Once um, these we're seeing um, the pre days like we did in the, in the, on the tab with the drivers, but we're also seeing last commodity. Um, and we need a tanker here, so let's just go for, pick up a. Uh, well, I assigned that pretty quick. That tanker, um, but tanker uh, uh, K4500 is now assigned to the load. And we've got an alert flashing in the upper right-hand corner. Hopefully, everybody can see that that, that red catching eye. So if I duck on that, I can see the alert is 
created because the deadhead percent on the book, load 6832, exceeded our which we set up was 10%. In this case, it's 11.72% of miles. Now, if I was an operations manager and one of my dispatchers just did that, you know, that might make me walk over and say, hey, Bill, you know, why are, why did you just put this, this driver on this load and we exceed our deadhead percent? And, of course, there may be a very good reason why he did that or that he needs to look for, for another driver to put on that load. We can also, if we want to get rid of an alert, we can hide an alert. If we want to hide alerts, we can say show hidden alerts. And you can see there's a number of other alerts in there that I had hidden earlier for vehicles, et cetera. If this driver for pay, of course, I can just click on the pay button and calculate it. And we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll dis this load the way we normally would. Let's just go ahead and uh, and complete the load. Now there is a screen that you're seeing now on the bottom. Once again, for those of you that that, that are doing washouts, um, you notice the screen at the bottom. The trailer washout is required for this load. So when the load gets delivered, you can see it's scheduled. But if if when we're completing the load, we want to complete the washout, we can complete. Uh, occurred. And it occurred at the delivery point is where they actually did the uh, did the walk. And we have a type of washout that occurred, and we'll say it was a hot water washout. And we'll go uh, complete. So load has now been has been completed. Load 6832. Any questions on on anything that I just went through there? Hey, my name. Yes. Uh, is there any way that we can add a trailer that we are not using, let's say, from a different carrier or a broker, without actually adding it to a data database? There, and I'll tell you what, if you hold, let's let's hold that for, for a minute, and I'll move when, when we get to the end, okay? Okay. So if we forget to get back to you on that, uh, please add, bring it up again at the end, okay? No Thank problem. you. Now, let's go into accounting. Let's go to print post freight bills. Once again, you're familiar with this screen here, here's that load 6832. So whether you're doing this in the print post freight bill screen um, or doing it in the settlement screen, you can you can really do this from, from either place. Um, but I can see in here, I can see my assignments. Um, 68, 68, uh, excuse me, let's pick, uh, let's select uh, load 68.2 so you can see the driver tractor trailer that was on load 68.32. Um, so if I had to enter an expense for this trip from right here, I could I could simply click <coughs> expense. I could select, um, and I'm going to add a, uh, add a toll. I just want to apply it um, to the tractor for this one load. Um, I could select the, the it was dollars. Um, Just create it, and that and the expense has now been has now been added. And if we Let's do that more time. The expense again. Uh, we'll select the tractor OCCT, and it was the toll that we did. Mm -hmm. We want to, and we'll select it. Seventy-five dollars. Save it, which I didn't do before. Now we'll close it, and if we go right into that into that tractor file. toll is there for $75. Once the expenses from either uh, the billing screen, um, from the payment screen, um, or you could certainly just add them, uh, just any just going into uh, operations uh, manager manager uh, expenses, or if you actually go right into the right into the tractor or the you could you could certainly add it in there as well in the pop up that I showed you. Let's look at reports, uh, a couple of reports that are dealing with, with expenses. 
we'll just go to reports, and uh, I'm just going to go to all. And just click on my grid. So I'm going to go to expense and review by resource summary. Um, there's two in the system. You can, you can expense by resource detailed, or you can run an expense and resource, expense and revenue by resource summary. I'm going to select, I'm going to just going to change this to the whole year, or year to date, and I'll just go ahead and run it. Get any equipment in my system that um, expenses associated with them, um, and, and it's also pulling the revenue. You can see it's pulling the pay, any maintenance that was done. It's breaking out fuel advances. It's breaking out cash advances, and it's a net profit and then a, um, a gross profit or loss per mile. Um, so say tractor O2CT across here. We can see miles it's run for the year at about 189,000. The total revenue generated by that tractor, uh, the pay that's been sent, been pushed through the system for that tractor, any maintenance expenses that have been entered, tractor, fuel entered in my system. Obviously, I haven't entered a lot. And cash advances, whatever, and these are expenses that you've set up through the expense module, the new expense module that we went over today and then your profit and your profit per mile. Um, you can also see um, uh, that it, it is giving, it is uh, pulling all these columns up for all the equipment and giving us our totals at the bottom. So our average profit per mile, if we look at our tractors and our tractors here is 99 cents. Top, it is breaking out your revenue for all loads, your payment for all loads, your expenses for all loads, your maintenance for all loads, your miles, your fuel advances, your cash advances. It's giving us our profit for all loads without the expenses, um, and it's showing our average profit without just the expenses, and then it's our profit all with, with expenses, and our average profit per mile with expenses. An expense by resource report. I want to, to read. I'm just going to click uh, make a PDF here uh, for those that haven't used the, the make a PDF or when you click on it, it says get the ghost script writer. Um, this happens when you have the PDF uh, installed. Um, and it makes it easier to view some reports, especially if it's a multi-page report in the system, because when you scroll through a report on the screen, as you're looking at a data window, and you look at a data window um, in Python, which our software is written in, sometimes it, it skips and it jumps. So it, by, by taking it through the writer, you, you can easily scroll through you can, you can, and you can see this information without um, any any difficulty. So if we back up, say the first one, once again O2CT, we can see year to date the expenses for this piece of equipment. We've got our highway tax, our tolls, our tractor insurance, our load payment, our tractor registration. Um, total is 10,002. We can see our full advances. We can see our maintenance. We can see the total for the selected time frame. I would encourage you as as you use the new expense functionality and and you run these reports. Please let us know what we can do to enhance the reports, change them, modify them. This is cut number one, uh, the expense module, as well as obviously the reports. We can be better, um, but we're looking for some feedback uh, from your customers to, to let us know what we should do to those reports to make them better. There is another report that it's not new to version 6. Uh, what I want to show you today, um, I spent a great time on the phone with existing customers that call me, they'll ask me various questions, we'll go into their system, we'll dive in, or I'll show them something in my system. And, and there's a report that was created by, by, by one of my customers, and actually it was a customer that, that was using um, a competitive system, wasn't happy with it. Um, they, they took the time to, to send a report that they used to use in that system, but they weren't completely happy with the report. They told us what they didn't like about the report what they wanted to add to the report, what they wanted to change to the report, added the report to the system. Actually, we added two reports. One of them is called Load Revenue and Payment Line Haul, by, line haul Analysis by Customer. The other one is a Load Revenue Payment Line Haul Analysis by Driver. And I'm just going to run the one by Customer. The report that the owner slash general manager of this, of this company in Minnesota um, is every morning. Um, this is in, he says, the first thing I do when I get in my office is I get a cup of coffee and then I run this report. But he runs this report, and what he's really looking for, and he just runs it for the previous day or the last two days. And what he's looking for on the report is he comes up and wants to see 
Um, how many days are the loads that were dispatched for? Are they single-day loads? Are they multi-day loads? He wants to look at the empty miles on each load. And if something jumps out at him like 912 empty miles on one load, he's going to highlight that load. He's going to go to the system. He's going to go talk to the dispatcher that dispatched that load to find out, did we book a load in the system? system and why why were the why are the miles empty miles nine hundred and twelve miles. He also knows he also looks at the total miles, he looks at miles per day, revenue. Another key column that, that he looks at is his revenue per day. That his trucks need to generate X number of dollars per day for him to not in business but remain profitable. So he's looking for a minimum number here, he's looking for a minimum average number. Those are the payments he made to the driver, and what he called the bets, because this was a custom report that we created for, for him, um, the bets is the difference between the revenue and the payment. So it's it's kind of like the gross profit or gross number, if you will. Um, so, you know, and, and other customers that I've shown this to have said, wow, this is exactly what we've been looking for. This will be great. This customer not only uses this report every day, but they also use use our business intelligence product. The business intelligence product called is is, is all switch. Um, we've had their webinars on, we've talked about in the past. But what they've been able to do is they've been able to by using this report and pulse, they've been able to reduce their empty miles from an excess of thirteen percent when they started using prophecy to nine percent today. They're about a sixty truck fleet. Their savings has been reduced any from ten thousand dollars per month. It's documented. Why the high fluctuation? We all know that fuel prices over the last um, 18 months have certainly fluctuated a great deal. So I would encourage you to take a look at take a look at this report. Um, I think you'll find it extremely valuable. Other things? Yes. Hi, Brian. This is Teresa with GoCo. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. I'd like to. Know, um, Report that you guys in this version that does not include fuel surcharge. Good question. Um, at this time, there is not, Teresa, a specific report um, that doesn't include fuel surcharge. What we what we do what we are looking at doing for what I'll call version six two though. And, and the reason we it's it's not as easy to do that, Teresa, is we you as a user to go in and create revenue item types. And in here, and I'll just go to my, um, what I call my fuel surcharge, and I'm calling it fuel surcharge. Now, Teresa, it might say CHG, or it could say anything as a, as a, as a they're calling it a fuel surcharge. Um, so what we're actually talking about doing on the development side right now is to set up an alias. So if you call it whatever, you're going to be able to make that equal to what we're going to call fuel surcharge. We will be able to give you the functionality to run a report and exclude specific types of revenue. So, and how important that is to you as an owner to be able to take that fuel surcharge out, especially if if you've got owner operators and you're passing that along to them, and you need to see just you know what is your revenue without the fuel surcharge. So, is we understand. Revenue, isn't that fuel surcharge revenue type? Isn't that a default one that came with profit? It's not. Um, it can be. It can well. There may, when you come in, in, in the sample database, there is one, but when you go into the blank database, you can set it up with however you want. And, and some more than one fuel surcharge, because some people do, uh, you know, have reefers, obviously, and they have a separate fuel surcharge for the reefer versus the power unit. So it sounds like a very simple thing to do um, from a report standpoint actually becomes a little bit more complex. But okay. we're aware of, and it is something we're working on. Okay, version two on your expense mode on the new version six. Yes. Can that be used? I, you used it in the freight bill screen, which we master build. Can it be used in the master bill screen as you well? You can absolutely. Oh, cool. Yes, no problem at all. Thank you. Very good questions. I want to talk quickly about about two other things. That's how did I create a group, and then the new email functionality that that's in the program. And I do apologize for running a little bit long today. That's my uh, group. Um, we're going to do main groups. And groups can be used for all kinds of things. If uh, most customers say about 60-65% have both an asset-based operation, but they also have their brokerage authority. 
Um, so if you want to create a group of, say, all of your motor carriers because you want to be able to email out to a, li a list of available loads to those carriers, you could do that. that. How group, group, you click group. group. Um, I'm going to make a group, and I'm going to call it, but I'm going to call this group my company drivers. And included in this group, I want all of my what we call payroll drivers. I'm going to click now on the left hand side I'm going to select with my company drivers I want to include in this group. And I'm going to what? I want them all. And I'm going to add. So they've all been added to the group on the right side. If you want to make this a private group, only for me, I can make it private. But if I make it available to anybody, I can just not check it off and it's available to anybody. So close that and I'll just go back in to show you. That boom, that that group has now been created. All my payroll drivers. So let's say I wanted to send an email to all of my company drivers. I could go to utility. Email. Those of you that have used our email functionality in the past, it looks totally different than the old one. If I wanted to a driver or a group of drivers, I'll just click two, and a new address book comes up. Much friendly broken out where you can select you want I'm going to select my company drivers just double click and I'm going to get it sent to all my company drivers the new message is and I'm just going to tell them that um, there will be a company meeting at And uh, all ten eligible to the iPod send. Look or Outlook Express, whatever I'm using for email, and it's going to send it through, in my case, Outlook. I hit yes, and it's been sent. A red email is kept in Outlook in your sent box, um, so you know that you know that it went out. And if there's a problem with any of them receiving it, of course, it would bounce back to your Outlook. What can you do with the email instead of just sending an email like that? Let's go to the dispatch board quickly. Let's go to loads. Let's click on here for say Baker. We'll click and we want to email him a load sheet. So load sheet comes up. Right now, what I need to do if I want to email this load sheet to Baker, I'll click email. It turns turn that report into a PDF. It attached it to the email. I'll click the two. I'll find driver Baker. Double click. Accept it. His email is, is his email address is there, and I'll just send it. Once again, my email client and send this email directly to driver Baker. Yes. Follow with Hendrickson. Emails out, and I noticed you had email addresses in there. Is that going to the that we have set up with Prophecy? The mobile, the mobile or is that going to like their cell phones? I like it to go. Because you can, because you can, you can actually do it either way. If you go into a first file, I'm sorry, this was Paula. Sure. Well, you can, you can set up. When you send something to a to a driver, like for this driver, Andrews, I've got an email address set up here as rtotten at mile dot com. Um, but I, when I'm sending an email, I could put um, your tracker your dispatch program. Is that correct? With the, yeah. the next cell phones, so I put the ten digit um, phone number for that driver at messaging dot nextel dot com for their email address, and then be sent directly to the uh, Driver's mobile device. Well, I mean, Kevin, it's the I'll show you where you can actually just see that right in the program. We'll go to preferences. We'll go to um, MoCom. Uh, we'll and see here. Um, from, if you're on the Nextel network, it's the 10-digit PTN, i.e., 240. So you'd put 240-304-0215 at met.nextel.com. Will get an email right on their phone, and, and emails um, there's no additional charge um, for a an email if you're on the data plan. 
um, with with uh, with Nextel. You, there's, I believe, there's at least one customer on the phone today that what they have in their phones um, is that they do send emails to their drivers and they have canned responses on uh, the phone. They're called quick notes, and if you set up quick notes, then the driver can quickly respond to an email they receive. I received load. Um, will arrive at, at at delivery. Um, you want you want to do that. Um, so that's something that if you need some more information on, we can certainly show you how to how to do that as well. Set up the quick notes in the phone. Okay, guys. If we don't send it to their mobile phones, send it to their like their personal cell phones. Certainly. Yeah. It's, it's if when you email whatever email address you've got in the email line for the driver. That's that's where the that's where the system is going to look for that information. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Smith with the Shaker Group. Can you real quick, if you're going to send a, an email to outside carriers, where's the email address going in the uh, carrier record? Sir, if you go. Yeah, there was only one spot, which was kind of a problem. Still. Well, there's 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 the one for the main contact, but now. You've got additional contacts down here um, that you can add. And what you're like, Jason, is in not in version 6, but version 6.1, actually. Okay. Version 6.1 has, has a lot of functionality for uh, brokers like yourself for not sending specific emails to specific people at a carrier or at a vendor. Um, you may use uh, other services as a broker as well. Okay. Um, but also specify which people. There may be multiple people at that company, and maybe one person gets the confirmation, but someone else gets another document. So functionally in version 6.1, you're going to have to wait for one more release. Um, and wait for that decimal to click kick to 1 from 0. Um, and you, I think you'll see the functionality that you're asking for. So potentially, if you look at a customer record, you could have one set up in accounting to get the invoice, one set up to get the status notes, one set up to get something. We consider the invoice for version 6.1. What we considered was like, like the BOS, the PODs, um, the permissions, um, all of the main documents um, that you see in the billing defaults. Like the, uh, we, I don't think they considered the invoice. I can check with them on that. Okay. Um, well, the load sheet, the confirmation, the quote. You know who should get who who at that company should get that document. Okay. You can so send multiple documents at once in version six one as, as well. So when you're doing a carrier assignment, you know, find the carrier and you're on the assignment screen, and you click uh, uh, file and you can select documents. It, it will let you send multiple documents at once instead of having to send them individually. Once again, I think we're getting a version ahead of ourselves here. So uh, let me, I kind of reel this in a little bit if you don't mind. Um, The email we went over, the groups we went over. Um, I believe I've actually covered everything within the system that, that I wanted to cover today. Let's quickly review uh, what we did go over. Uh, we went over the expense tracking that's been added. We went over driver schedules and alerts, the alert center, and including these alerts, the deadhead, the revenue, the driver appointment, the license, the physical, the registration, um, on the, actor, the registration on the trailer. We talked about uh, why tracking. We talked about several new preference settings and they'll just they'll just fly in. Um, groups about reports. With the showed you how um you know the direct email PDF where you click the PDF and it automatically makes it into an email. Um several questions already but I will certainly open it up if there if there's any more questions. Steve with B and J trucking. Yes Steve um, concerning trailer wars, I know you primarily was looking at it from an angle of a uh, uh, like a bulk hauler or a tanker, but we do a refrigerated business that requires washouts for certain things as well. Part of it would fit, for instance, we would need to do a washout after we haul a certain commodity, say if we hauled fresh chickens, uh, um, then we would do a washout. But can we – have you thought about doing that in somewhat of a, re, of a reverse, for instance, if 
our next load is going to be picked up at XYZ customer. The customer may require us to do a wash out of our reefer prior to getting there. No matter what was hauled in it before? No matter what was hauled in it. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so can we attack that also from some somehow flagging the customer as a wash or two type thing versus all a after a commodity type situation. Um, down, I'll send it over to our development group. Um, the walk functionality, the expense tracking, all this new functionality. Hmm. You know, we take the baby steps, and sure. if that's something that is, uh, you know, would would be uh, reasonable for them to do, and we can add, I'll certainly uh, put yeah, it in. Yeah, current, currently we have it kind of built into that customer in little notes and stuff, but a lot of times those notes are overlooked. If it was, you know, dispatcher going to assign a resource to this customer's load, it'd be nice if a pop-up pops up, hey, you know, this customer requires warship to make sure the warship happens prior to being there or something, or just some kind of flag. Sure. And company name again was? B&J. B&J. Okay, great. Thank you. Any questions or, or suggestions? And I, and I would encourage you, if you have other, other either questions or suggestions, you can certainly call with the questions. But if you have other suggestions, please email out. Address will come up here at the end, but don't hesitate to uh, um, send any uh, any emails over to me. I, I want to introduce you to uh, Miriam Vella. I'm sure many of you know Miriam as the director of our training department. I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, more about how you can maximize what you're out of your prophecy software today. Mary Miriam? Hey, by the way, great presentation. So much information that you just gave um, that's going to benefit uh, the people at this webinar. Imagine when uh, we, there are things we add in there that customers that have been using the software for a while realize that it's kind of hard for us to try to reach back and contact every new customer and or existing customer and say, wait a minute, did you know that this is a, a might have came up during implementation with you, add in. Uh, we do offer um, in-house training for customers to come up here to Prophecy, um, your site, to work with your people, uh, to make sure that you're utilizing the software uh, the way you can and maximize the it's a price. And also we do have, you know, telephone training, that if you have other staff members in the, the uh, office that weren't able to attend the webinar, might talk to uh, an instructor. Uh, feel free to give, give us a call, and we can talk over your, your uh, how we can get this information out to your your other employees. Uh, questions about the different services that we provide in the uh, implementation side? Session, please. What your training needs are going to be. I mean, we do offer like the in-house training. Um, and we also offer like telephone training. Uh, today, actually, we're offering a discount for somebody that joined in on the webinar because we realize that you can some time to invest in all the new features that we have. Uh, if you want, you, what you could do is just email me. Um, we discuss what your training needs are, and we can take it from there. And I, I noticed something in Kevin's presentation, and I don't think that the our particular um, business, either we don't have the function on there or I don't know where it is, but it's the emailing to all the drivers. That would be really, really helpful on our end. Is that something we have or I don't know? Is it? Yeah. Um, you can check the version that you presently have. And, yeah. and if you don't, if you haven't been shipped version 6 yet, we can get it to you. you and and just to... I, do okay. I, can, I can get that shipped out to you. And just your question, as Miriam said, there there is a 10% discount right now on a four-hour block of training. So one thing to consider doing is a four-hour block of training would be normally $599. Uh -huh. So discount now, saving the $60. And then Miriam or somebody on her team maximize those those four hours so that you can maximize your return um, on the four hours that you spend with her and, and certainly get more out of version 6 and get more out of the software in general. Okay, so I mean, we have to do we the e thing that comes with version six. 
Oh, okay. It's, the program. it's in the program we have today. It's just not as user-friendly today as, as it is in version 6. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Other questions for myself or Miriam? Milan Vigemini again. Yes. Uh, still waiting for that response for the outside source trailer without putting... I'm sorry. Well, thank you for reminding me. When you, when you book a load in the system, when you go to do an assignment, um, let me just uh one here. I know this. So this is add a third-party trailer. Okay. If you got a third-party trailer, um, trailer to the load, uh, type in a description for the trailer. A trailer on the load, but it, it does not add that trailer to your to your system. I cannot add a uh, number of the trailer. I cannot put ID. For what you can do, you can't put ID, but in the description you could put you could put the trailer number. So will it show on a dispatch board screen the number that I put in the description? that that shows up there, uh, but that's something that we could check on for you. Okay, one more thing. Um, we're doing a lot of business with uh, frequent loads. Uh, the way that uh, actually in version 6, it can act it with history surcharge on a fuel. So for if I change it in a his, uh, history surcharge for previous previous month, The question is a little bit more in depth. I mean, we'd have to look at how you set up your frequent loads. If you're rating, are you are when you when you save your frequent loads, are you rating them already? Yes. Okay. What I suggest you do is not rate your frequent loads. Leave it, and then as you bring up your frequent loads, rate them, and then the system will automatically pick up the correct fuel surcharge that's in effect for the time you're shipping. Uh, we can't. We can't. What we can't do is is automatically go back and just change. Uh, update based on a fuel surcharge that, that's been updated. Mm -hmm. Does this mean that, let's say, for example, for one customer, I have, let's say, for a week, 127 loads. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them I have to go and for a one. I, you, you can rate them all at the same time. If, if you rate them all in, in, in one screen, um, you can select them and rate them. And, um, is you know you might want to get together with Miriam and someone from her group and spend a couple hours going over that how your how your workflow should be and I'm sure you'll end up saving a tremendous amount of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. I can go ahead and just uh, later and see about setting something up. We'll do that. Okay. Right. For anybody else, once again, I, I I do apologize. We went a little long today and uh, we normally don't go this long on a webinar, but I hope you've all found it beneficial. Certainly, thank you all for your participation today. Thank you for your your business in the past, and, and look forward to working with you as we move forward. Have a great day. Bye.